Hey everyone, Steve here with Class A Surfacing. So, um, I apologize, it's been a little while. I've uh, just been really wrapped up. Anyway, uh, I'd like to get into this little project here that uh, one of my uh, subscribers asked me about. How would I go about attacking this? Now, I've, I've been really wrapped up. I just got some new clients and I've been extremely busy, so I don't have a chance to really sit down and, and uh, do the actual modeling for this, but I tell you exactly how I would go about modeling this. Now, this drawing is uh, leaves a bit to, to be desired. It looks like an old ship drawing. So uh, um, understanding some of the uh, terminology here is pretty important. First, you have a, what's called a water line. The water line is the depth of the boat or the height of the boat, depending upon, or ship, depending upon uh, how you want to look at it. So um, these water lines, I look at this and see this is a Z direction. Next, you have uh, what's called a buttock line. The buttock line is the beam of the boat, how wide the boat goes, and as you can see here, so on and so forth. And then next, what you don't see on the drawing here, each of these lines, this is my zero starting at this point and working my way back, is called a station line. Now, if I zoom up on this, for instance, let me come in here and... Um, go to this end you'll notice that zero starts here and the tip of the boat actually extends beyond okay the reason that is is if I look at this perpendicular line and come up you can see here there is my zero of my boat okay so uh, depending upon who designed it who model it um, they may put decide to put the zero um, right at the very tip or right at the uh, intersection of where the uh, the hull comes together right down the center somewhere down in here something along those lines but as you can see this is right up right around the 24 foot water line so there's probably an engineering reason why they did this I don't know I don't know the full history of this it's just a picture that I got but how would I attack it how would I model this out now for me I like to set up references. I'm a big fan of references. In this, they give us a ton of references. They're not obvious, but they give us a ton of them. So this is obviously the uh, floor of the boat. This is the very bottom of the hull. And then each one of these successive um, curves goes up higher and higher and higher. Okay. So if I take a look here at this, what you'll notice is... I have, let me, uh, let me zoom up on this here a bit. I have all of these shapes as they go up further and further along the side of the boat. Now, if I come down here, you'll notice that this is what the shape looks like coming in from the rear. This is what the shape looks like coming in from the front. So I would basically set up a frame. Okay, now that frame would be something like I would have an X, X uh, Y, Z, and maybe an axis system set up at this point to reflect that. So anything along the x-axis would be perpendicular to my station lines. Um, anything on my y-axis would be my buttock lines, and then anything on my z-axis would be my water lines. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. Based off of that, I would set that up, and then I would just offset some planes just as a as a good reference. So the first plane I would offset. I would try to capture this little portion down here and this portion up here as you can see this goes perfectly flat and down here this goes perfectly flat as well now with that being said uh, if I set up my plane here and I set up my plane here that gives me my um, basically big flat side portion so this would be the bottom as you can see I would uh, encompass this entire bottom on that bottom flat plane and then the same thing here on uh, this side view here, or the shear plan as they would call it, you would have this as a big flat side. Okay. Now, as you can see, at this point, right about here, it starts to curve in. Actually, it's further up. I was looking at some of these contour lines. It starts to uh, curve in at that top edge up here somewhere. And the same thing. So I would set those up as references as well, fore and aft, to uh, just a couple of planes where the initial curve takes place at the top edge. Now, to get this shape, 
I would draw in this curve here on the bottom plane. I would draw in from uh, basically what you see here roughly, I would draw in this curve as well, out to about that length, and then I would run some sort of a, a ruled surface or a blend between those two to get that flat, broad shape. Now the same thing for the bottom. The bottom, this is going to be just basically planar, so for that, I would just uh, on the plane draw a big rectangle, and then, or depending on if you're using an extra katia, draw that profile and split away the extra material you don't need, or do a fill to close off that profile. Now, once you have that, that allows you to go in there now, next thing to do, and put in this blend, which we set up with a couple of reference planes. So you can offset, do intersects to where those blends need to go, and then do a blend surface. Once you have those base elements, excuse me, here you can see this shape. This shape drives all the way up, all the way up to basically this point. You can sort of envision it. So this bottom shape, as it goes closer to the top, right, is going to come up and it's going to spread out to sort of encompass that, that swarfy shape underneath. And then this would be a, another surface that comes in and builds for the secondary sort or the secondary blend. So you would have a surface in here, as you can see, let me zoom up on this. Um, this blend here pretty much almost comes all the way up to this curve. Okay. So I would build those as independent patches based off of the original patches that I built, which are this side, this bottom. As far as anything that goes up above, let's say, like waterline 40 here, okay, now um, you could choose to basically take this shape right here. They give you that shape, that curve, which is this one right at the top. All right, so if I look at this shape, that curve right there sits right there. All right, so then you can just sort of extrapolate that shape. Once you get to the flat, run it all the way to the back, and then run it all the way down and around at that top level, and then trim away the material that you don't need. Okay, so you would overbuild. So these first initial shapes you would get blocking in all the patches, all the surfaces. The front obviously looks very different than the rear, but it is symmetrical across your uh, zero foot butt, lock, butt line or buttock line. So if you look here, you'll see everything is in feet. And also set up your file. So it's if you have the option to go feet, put it in feet. Like in Katia, you can easily do that in NX. You can go inch, uh, pretty straightforward. I think you can do foot now. Let me check. Let me give you a proper answer. I haven't looked at that in a while. Uh, let me go file new. So I have another screen right over here. I think it's only inch. Yep, it's inches and in millimeter, that's it. So um, they do have, if you buy the package, they do have a uh, um, ship building inside of NX for ship structures. So under ship structures, you may be able to uh, get something in there that um, comes closer to what you need. Pretty good package. Play around with it a little bit. But in NX, you'd have to go right with inch and just convert everything. Not a big problem. So, again, the first thing I would do is I would lay out a couple of base planes. Maybe um, look at this view. Plane for the, for this wall. Plane for this wall. Spe uh, basically sets up my, um, my width. Plane for this vertical wall. Plane for the floor. And then a couple of key planes here, here, maybe here and here. Uh, for an aft to, to basically frame in those initial big patch surfaces. A little long, I apologize, but that's how I would go about doing it. And again, I'm sorry, I don't have time to go about building this. Um, I've got billable work I have to do. Anyway, I hope that uh, makes a little bit of sense. Um, if you have any questions regarding this, please ask them in the comments below. Um, I'll try to get to them as soon as I can. Again, thanks.